Hey everybody, welcome back to Kentucky Route Zero. Uh, last time we played the entertainment, that interlude there, that intermission, and it was incredibly long, and I did not appreciate it because of its length. It was like two plays happening simultaneously, but it went on forever. Okay. 83 and sunny now. Looks like it's gonna get up to about, oh, or excuse me, <laughs> it's gonna get about 101 by late afternoon in Louisville and 103 in E-Town. Not a cloud in sight, so get out those parasols. <laughs> Major accident just ahead of the Bardstown exit. So if you're headed to work on 31, you are late, my friend. <laughs> Sugar? Uh, oh, Lisette is our boss. I was like, who is this lady? Uh, you know what? Uh, just a little, please. I forgot how you take your coffee. <laughs> I'm tired. I didn't sleep well. Well, you know what? I forgot you existed, so... Those old horses of Ira's used to keep me up. Or, I heard you yelling. Bad dreams? Yeah, maybe you had some bad dreams. We were up on a roof, Ira and I and Charlie... Eating a light supper. I was drinking sweet tea. Charlie was reading. We were surrounded by other houses, closely packed. Huge sidewalks. It must have been a... What's the word? Uh... A subdivision? That's it. I'm sure. Below us, a group of people were gathered, standing quietly. A man was reading from a book. I asked Ira about the weather. Would it rain on Tuesday, or when would the sun set? Something like that. He wouldn't answer me. Charlie stood up and Ira told him to watch his step. And then I remembered. I woke up before I could stop him. So did your son really die falling from a roof in, in real life then? Charlie was alone on that roof. Or I always told him to test each tile with a heel first. You know what? It's not your fault if he fell from the roof like... If you weren't up there, if he was by himself, not really your fault. I guess he was alone on that roof. He was bright. His teacher said, what was the word? Uh, imaginative? That's it. I forget. He didn't listen. Or it wasn't his fault. Um, you know, it probably wasn't his fault. It was just an accident. It wasn't anyone's fault, Conway. That's what we mean when we say it's an accident. Sure. Well, we have a mail order delivery today. Might be a long drive. I hope the truck can hold up. Um, that truck will outlive us all. I hope you're right. I'm glad you'll keep it. Ira would have wanted you to have it. It's been running since Charlie was born. Ira took me to the hospital in that truck. So did you once. Um, yeah, when you fainted or your knee. Uh, let's go with fainted, because that sounds like a more interesting story. My hero. So, uh, long drive? They said they couldn't come in person. Maybe just a shut-in. I don't recognize the address. The order is all, uh, wibbly? I'm sure we can fill it in. Uh... I guess that'll be the last of it. Yes, it will be. The last act of Lisette's Antiques. The, oh, what's the word? Uh, finale. Let's not do death rattle. That's a little too ominous. The finale. Maybe. No, that's not the word. I just need to think a bit. More coffee or something? Or I've had too much. Um, you know what? It'll come to you. Maybe. I'm not sure anymore. It seems inevitable there will start to be words that I lose forever. Like, do you have, like, dementia as well? Like, what's going on? Is that why you keep asking me all, oh, oh, you do have memory loss. That's why you kept asking me, like, what was my son's... Well, completely missed that part, I guess. Uh, what are those boxes you set in the hallway? Uh, those are your clothes? You packed them yesterday? Or... Uh, I think those are Charlie's old books. Oh. 
thought you might like to look at them. I thought we could look at them together. You know what? Let's... You know what? You might need help. It might be kind of difficult for you to go through them by yourself, so we could look at them together. Sounds nice. Cora should be here soon. Will you wait with me? Uh, sure. I'll wait with you, and then I'll go do that delivery. There's your traffic and weather on the fives. That's every ten minutes. Brought to you by the Consolidated Power Company. Stick around for old Kentucky home with Kate. Helping you turn your humble home into a mansion after this. Oh. I have a skeleton leg now. Am I supposed to have a glowing skeleton leg? Because this seems weird. Now that's only if you want to make a late payment on a follow-up visit. I think everything went well enough here that there are only... They'll only want to bill for... Oh, he's awake. How do you feel, old man? All fixed up? Truman says you might be a little misty coming out of it, so... Uh, I was dreaming. That's unlikely. Ripnol TM is quite powerful. In fact, many patients report a sensation of lost time. Do you feel like you've lost time? Um, I guess so. It's been about two hours. Well, uh... What have you been doing for two hours? We watched TV for a while. Then Dr. Truman showed me some of the terms of this bill. It's kind of... Uh, you'll want to look over it yourself, I think. How about that leg? How's your leg feeling? Yeah, that's the important part. Yeah, Conway shifts his leg in the chair, testing it. Well, um... Th well, this isn't my leg. It seems better, but it wasn't worth it, or it was the heat. The shingles were cracked in the sun, and one of them slipped out under his feet. Uh, we're not going to talk about Charlie. Um, we're going to talk about the fact that I have, like, some kind of uh, shining robot skeleton leg? <laughs> not your... Of course it's your leg! Um, It looks wrong. You replaced it. Hmm, I haven't encountered this reaction before, but it's not totally unheard of. I read a paper about something like this last year. It can happen for a lot of reasons. Neurological, psychological, social. I'm sure it won't persist in your case. Um, yeah, thanks. Your thoughts and feelings are probably still a little nebulous from the Neuripnol TM. That's totally normal. It'll pass. I wouldn't recommend driving for at least another hour or two, regardless. Uh, I think I'll stare remotely at my leg. I could thank him, I can say I can drive, but I'm just going to stare remotely at my leg. Let's talk about a few things you should be aware of. Recovery, rehabilitation, and side effects. <laughs> should have plenty of resting time coming up. How long am I going to be recovering, or... I'm used to a few side effects. Uh, Lo, let's ask him how long the recovery period is. Well, at your age, I want to be clear, you should expect lingering effects of the injury for more or less the rest of your life. Don't immerse it fully in water, avoid extremes of temperature, I'd stay away from dusty roads and mountain lions as much as possible. Mountain lions? A good advice in any context. Best thing you can do is keep it free, clean, and free of debris. So... Is a robot leg? Like, what do you mean, like... You said it's not my leg. You said it is my leg, that this is a... You said that I'm, like, imagining this. But also you're telling me not to get it wet, and also don't get debris in it? Like, it's clearly not my leg. Uh, what do I clean it with? <laughs> Only clean your leg with a soft cloth, moistened with water, or isopropyl alcohol. You'll definitely want to avoid abrasive agents like detergents or other solvents. What is this robot skeleton like? So do you have any questions? Anything about the bill that didn't make sense? I don't mean to rush you, but I have an early fishing trip. Um... I don't want to think about that bill. 
And what are you fishing for? No, I think Shannon should say, tell him about the payment plan and the bill. Ah, yeah, that's one of the uh, atypical clauses. I don't really have any control over the bill now that the Consolidated Power Company bought my employer. They handle everything. So it all runs through your electric electricity bill now. You can pay it back in full on your next billing cycle, or you can get on an energy credit payment plan. You'll have to call Consolidated for more details about that. I don't really understand how it works. Something about generating electricity to send back to the grid? Alright, so um, my leg is a uh, electrical robot uh, skeleton leg that can be plugged into the grid. Oh, one more thing. Don't be alarmed if you experience any side effects of the Neuripnol TM. Typically, we see daydreaming, deja vu, pensiveness, fugue states, irregular perception of time. About 15% of patients report a generalized sensation of lateness. Nothing to be alarmed about, just keep it in mind. Well, thanks for your help. Julian's outside. We can head back to your truck. Alright, small child. Let's head back to my truck, I guess. My weird robot skeleton electricity leg. The Museum of Dwellings. All right, truck, Shannon, Blue, let's talk to Blue. Hey, look, I can really move now. Hey, you get some rest back there, bud? I don't feel much rested myself. And yeah, we'll get a break, maybe tomorrow, huh? Shannon? How are the drugs treating you? Um, you know what? I don't really like to take medicine. That's kind of true to me, like, in real life as well. Nah, it's good for you. He's a doctor, right? I know what you mean, though. My folks had a peculiar relationship with medicine. We almost never had a regular doctor, or health insurance, or anything like that. Our immigration stuff was a mess for most of my childhood, so we only qualified for state programs in small patches before something or other would get contested and we learned to just pile on dentist appointments and stuff in those short windows. If a cut got infected or her migraines were usually were too much to handle, mom would talk to so-and-so who knew so-and-so, usually another minor, and end up with some pills. And instead of medical advice, every pill came with gossipy anecdotal warnings and superstitions like all this lore that came with it, like magic. Dangerous. Mysterious. Um, Weaver's folks couldn't help? Yeah, they had pretty good health care through the university for a while there. A couple times they'd swing something so I'd get a bit of whatever Weaver needed. In high school, Weaver got these pills to help her focus. She was so smart, but always going off in different directions, mind racing. Like five conversations going on in her head at once, and you're lucky if even one of them is something is with someone in the room, you know? She had those pills, and they seemed to help. I was struggling in school, too, failing my history class. She offered to share the pills. Did it help? At first, yeah, it helped a lot. I had a k kind presence and clarity of purpose that uh, I never really had otherwise. I didn't want to stop taking them. One day I was sitting on my bed. My notebook was open next to me on top of the of a textbook, and I was holding a pen in my hand. I remember this moment from several years before. It came up so suddenly. With such precision, I couldn't put it out of my mind. I felt I had to stay with it until I'd recalled the whole thing perfectly. It was just a tiny nothing moment. My mom uh, patching up the side of a birdcage, winding some spare wire around the frame to reinforce it. I was fixated on that image and that sound. The cage kind of bending and twanging as uh, she worked on it. Wrapping and nodding, scraping copper against paint like bowing a rubber violin with a railroad tie. My parents came back from a triple shift and found me still sitting there on the edge of the bed, pen in my hand, delirious with thirst, patching that birdcage with that thousand yard stare. Yeah, so that doesn't sound great. So I can go back to the truck, but is there anything else? Oh, the boy is following me. Okay, sweet. There's the giant bird. Hey, giant bird. 
Like, is there some, anything out here? Okay. The uh, reflections are kind of cool, but I guess there's nothing... Like, it feels like there must be something out here for this to be this much area to roam around, but... I also didn't see anything, so why did they build this whole area? If there was no reason to click on everything. But, feels like I'm reached the edge, so... Oh god, the... What is this? What is this truck? Hold on. I'm the boy now? Why am I the boy now? What happened? Hi, Flora. Are those people like your new family? Um, I think we're friends. I don't have any friends because I'm so busy. Too bad it's not raining anymore. Uh... You like the rain? I'm an excellent swimmer. Uh, so what's the boat for? I folded it out of some paper from the front desk. How far do you think it will go? We should stand here and watch it until it disappears over the horizon with a far off look in her eyes. I lean my head on your shoulder and right when it's a tiny speck, just before it vanishes, you'll say something romantic. Okay. Well, we better get started. All right, so what if I just don't click anything? Is it is it going away? I can't tell if it's... It is leaving these... the screen. Or am I crazy? I feel like there might be something to this, just letting it float but i really can't tell like okay so it's here this is the extent that it was before so it's definitely going how far will it go though do 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 do, do. wasting time wasting time la, la 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 wasting time come on boat keep on going go boat go 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 hey hey The boat is still right there. Oh, Flora. I can tell her something romantic. Can you still see it? Um, just barely if I squint. Yeah, I have really powerful eyes. Um, uh, just barely if I squint. Better hurry up with a poem or something. Uh, a boat beneath a sunny sky. Lingering onward, dreamingly, in an evening of July. No, 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 it's not even sunny. Okay, I like you anyway. Well, hey, we got an achievement. Is that really this whole thing? Did I come all the way over here just to get an achievement and be the boy? Well, I don't see much else. Okay, let's go back to the truck. His head was looking up at the at the bird. Okay, let's get on the truck. Let's go. So, what's the plan here? Um, we should try to get in touch with that clerk. Accuse a bite to eat. What do you think, actually? Well, we got to get back on the zero and bring those documents back to the clerk at the bureau. I'm just not sure how to get there. The entrance at the farmhouse was gone. Um. Let's just take another look at the farmhouse then. Sure, okay, maybe we missed something. It's time to go. Um, I don't know where I am. Okay, so that's the Equus. The truck's engine sputters and dies as Conway guides it carefully off the road next to a fallen tree. Okay, well, uh, surprise! 
Surprise cutscene. By cutscene, I mean actual scene that we have to interact with. Tree. Um, yeah, that's a problem. Nothing to be done. It just won't start up again. Damn, you had this truck long? I were bought it used a ways back. I wonder how old it was then, do you? Wait, is this why you always leave your truck running? First time it's just died like this, actually. Well, where's the champagne? Uh, anyway, do you know this area? Anyone around here that could give us a hand? Well, um, I drove past here yesterday. Oh, what were you doing out here yesterday? What was I doing out here yesterday, actually? That's what I asked you. I saw two strangers by the road. Did you give them a ride or something? Um, they wanted me to, but I was in a hurry. No, I think they wouldn't take it. That was thoughtful of you. Hey, we should call someone. Do you know a good towing company? Yep, Lucky Boot Collision of Towing. That's, here's their card. I found this card for Mercadet Wreck Recovery on the dash. I can't read the name or number on this flyer, but it looks like a picture of a tow truck. <laughs> Worth a shot. I'll give them a call. I hope I can get a signal out here. Shannon speaks into the large brick cell phone held up to her ear. Hi, ah, hello. We've got an old, uh, I want to say diesel? Old truck just stalled out? Inaudible irritable? Inaudible sleepy? Inaudible confused. Let's go with sleepy. Did I wake you? Your card says open 23 hours a day. Accusatory. Inquisitive. Suspicious. Um, let's go inquisitive. Yeah, that's why I'm calling, exactly. That's all. Apoplectic? Or, excuse me, apolog apologetic. That's differently than uh, apoplectic. Uh, let's apologize. No, it's okay. We just need to get, need to, get to an auto shop and get this taken care of. All right, let's be wistful. Well, I'm, uh, very sorry to interrupt that, but... Pragmatic time? Right, yeah, thanks. Okay, it's, uh, where are we? We're just off 65, just kind of pulled up by this tree that fell over. All right, um, can you be more specific? That's, uh, actually a pretty accurate description of it, yeah. Hanging over the power lines, just like that. Did you see it go down? Eh, you know what? Just kind of these things kind of happen. I guess it doesn't matter. Well, thanks again. We'll see you soon. How long do you think you'll be? Silence. Radio music. Distant traffic sounds. Let's just silence. Hello. Hey, Ezra. How you doing, bud? Are you bored? Uh. Yeah, but I don't mind. Yeah, I don't mind either. Let's play a game. How about 20 questions? Or what would you like to play, Ezra? Um, we can tell the future with this little tree branch. You can. How? It's pretty easy. We just break off all the little sticks on each section and count through the different things that could happen. Okay, what should we ask? It should be about you. I can't do both the counting out and the questions. Um... Let's say, uh, what kind of job will I have next? Ezra snaps the smaller, the smaller branches away, one at a time, counting out possibilities. Doctor, lawyer, taxman, driver, driver. Okay, what else? Well, I'm gonna be a driver after I become, after I stop being a driver. Uh, what kind of bed will I sleep in tonight? King size, queen size, twin size, bunk. Bunk. These other branches are too bare. Don't worry about it too much. It's just a bunch of sticks. Hey, Blue. How long do you think we'll be waiting here, Blue? Yeah. Do you get bored late at night, Blue? I don't. I like it better when everyone else is asleep. Shannon? 
I think they're on their way. I guess we have some time to kill. Uh, we could look over the road map again. I stared at that thing too long already. Where'd you get that old map anyway? Um, I don't really remember. I guess it's always just been in the truck. Huh. Someone must have grabbed it at a gas station somewhere along the line. Or maybe they threw it in the glove box at the dealership. When my parents bought their first car here, it came with a map. I used to sit in the back and pour over it. And, uh, Remedios, uh, saw me looking at it, I guess, and a few days later she gave me a map she brought from Colombia. It looked almost hand-painted. Deep, vibrant colors and rough border lines, like anxious brush strokes. Really pretty. I'd slowly trace the coastline with my finger, like I was walking on the beach, and say, Here we'll swim, here we'll start a fire, here we'll find a cave in the cliff face and go live among the- we'll go live among the bats for a while. Um... I think I'll take a look at that radio of yours. Maybe I can get it going again. No point in just standing around. Why don't you do that? Well, uh, how's it looking? The leads are badly corroded, but I'm making progress. That's what I like about working on electronics. It gets easier as you go on. Uh, or you just get used to it. Almost there? I guess I do just have to wait for her then. Distant motorcycle engine. Mm, 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 mm. Is this the right way? I don't recognize those trees. Johnny and Junebug. What's to recognize? It's just a bunch of trees. Just the trees are so quiet, right? Usually you'd hear birds wind a little squirrel or something look doesn't seem so quiet right now yeah you're right maybe I'm a little bored I'll work on some chord progressions in my head for a while or something <laughs> we should look at the road ahead not the road behind how far are we uh I don't know uh 20 minutes damn Harry's not gonna be happy you know he doesn't like me anyway you know what? I'll tell him about the frog. He won't understand. Hey. Yeah. Didn't you play on this record? Um. This is Dee Dee's record. Yeah, Dee Dee, Dee Dee. That guy is out of control. We should do a set with him. You know what? But well, he's a creep. Yeah, that creep can play, though. What time is it? Uh, it's late. Harry's gonna flip out. That old man was born flipped. I just hope we can scrape up some tips. Hard enough when you get there on time. Just play that keyboard. Oh, wait, hold on. Is this... This is Junebug that was supposed to go to the... Cafe place that from the intermission but she never showed up to be the entertainment and Harry was the bartender wasn't he it's been a, a little bit since I played that but you know what I'll make sure Harry pays up I have a way with him I know I don't think you're gonna get Harry to pay up hey guys wait all right see ya You know, we're already late. Um, are you gonna explain all this to Harry? Oh, uh, no way, you're the smooth talker. In fact, I bet you'd have no problem explaining we had to stomp out of the goodness of our nature and check on some wayfaring strangers. Fine, just for a few minutes though. You're the best. And hey, maybe if they're not busy, they can fill some seats at the gig, you know, if no one's there. Harry will try and book us on our feet. All right, so we're gonna go back and talk to the guys. Um, Shannon? Maniacs. You okay? Um, yeah, I'm fine. You? Oh, no, I'm fine. Thanks. They were in a hurry. Um, 
Where do you think they're headed? I don't know. Headed to work? Headed home? Where are any of us headed? Here come my dogs, the first one to go over there and greet them. Stay here. Careful. He's wicked with strangers. <laughs> you. You know what? Um, you didn't have to stop. We have got a tow coming. Or you're here to clear the tree. Or who's chasing you? You know what? You didn't have to stop. You hear that, Cricket? We didn't have to stop. Oh, why did we stop? That's a good question. These folks seem to have a certain handle on the situation. So, uh... Oh, um... We thought you were stopping to help. Sure, sure. Something like that. Listen, we've got two questions for you folks. What kind of people do you take us for? I mean, how do we strike you? Um... I mean, you seem nice enough. You turned back around and came back. What do you think, Cricket? Her generosity is unmistakable, ma'am. It radiates. It does radiate. Now, here's another question for you. Do you like music? Do you like music? Uh, Set used to sing in taverns on the weekend. Beautiful stuff. Sometimes I like to leave the radio dial between stations, or I don't like music, but I do like sounds. Um, You know what, Lisette? We used to go to the bar and the tavern. Of course you do. Say, they should come to our gig. What an idea. Uh... We're just trying to get back on the zero. The zero? Is that a fact? The zero? Gosh, Cricket, you folks are in luck. I happen to know just where you're going, and I'm happy to lead you there. We've been down there many a time riding this baby. Um, this is the Sloth on Wheels. That's what we call our bike. We call it the Sloth on Wheels because it's too tired. Uh, <laughs> Only, it's just... See, we have a regular booking tonight, and, well, we're running late. Very late. That's what I told them. Now the old man who runs this venue, Harry Espinoza, or, excuse me, Esperanza, is a notorious withholder. And if we don't get a few bodies in the crowd, well, they'll go all penny-pinching on us. Just a short set. We only have one song prepared. You'll come to the gig, won't you? Uh, I guess... Of course they will! Can you believe we almost didn't stop? To blue. Hungry, old lady? I think I got a crust in the sidecar here. After all, it's so late. Well, it's all said and done. We stopped. That's all that matters. Our gig's at an old tavern called the Lower Depths. It's over there by old Charlie Moran Highway. Just east off 65. We usually take a ride off the interstate around the petting zoo. Johnny likes the petting zoo. I do like the petting zoo. Now, let's see about that truck of yours. I feel certain we can get it running. Well, the uh, tow truck man's gonna come all the way out here and then... Alright, over by Charlie Moran Highway, just east off 65. Take it right off 65 around the petting zoo. Alright, well we need to get back on the 65 then. And we go east, and we find a petting zoo, probably somewhere. That's the burning tree. That's the farmhouse. There's the petting zoo. The petting zoo is closed. Oh, they went up. They went on without me. The tavern. All right, well, I think this is a good time once we get into the scene to end the episode because it's been quite a a lengthy one. But uh, thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you next time.